Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here with a PS Viewer video. This video is going to be all about the holy trinity of PS Viewer titles that are still to drop in 2019, or at least these are the three games that I think have a lot of potential and a high likelihood of being great PS Viewer games and give people even more reasons to pick up a PS Viewer headset, even though I truly believe there's plenty of reasons already right now. So I've picked three titles here and I was very nearly going to pick four by including Spire 1, which is an upcoming stealth game that looks like half Metal Gear Solid, half Splinter Cell. And I absolutely love Metal Gear, so I'm really excited for that game. The only thing preventing me from putting Spire here is that I don't know what it's going to be like on PS VR. I know it looks great on PC VR, it runs pretty well on the Quest 2, according to David Jagno of Upload Viewer, but I haven't been able to find any gameplay impressions of the PS Viewer versions, and I always worry about the translation from PC Viewer to PS Viewer, especially when it comes to those goddamn move controllers. But before I go on, let me just say Aspire 1 is definitely a game you guys should keep an eye on if you like the sound of stealth in Viewer. Anyway, so what games have I actually included in this holy trinity? Well oddly enough, two of these upcoming games are already out and the other one is Iron Man. So let's start with No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is a pretty well known game. If you were on gaming websites back in 2016, then you definitely heard about it. It was a game that promised an unlimited universe to explore, filled with cool things to do and see, and then it delivered an unlimited universe to explore, filled with diddly and squat. Not to mention a bunch of bugs and crashes and all that stuff. That game was almost universally hated at launch, but that was back in 2016. In the last three years, Hello Games, the developers behind No Man's Sky, have pulled off one of the biggest 180s in gaming history. They kept adding free updates to their game, and with each update came the introduction of the features that they had promised plus some other improvements and upgrades. Vehicles were added, base building was added, multiplayer was added, the graphics were updated, the variety of biomes that you could find on planets was increased, a more substantial story was added and just a bunch more other things. So No Man's Sky today might be unrecognizable to how it was at launch. Hardcore No Man's Sky communities have popped up, some communities are creating like federations, Others are trying to build cities on planets, and some people are role-playing as evil overlords, infiltrating communities and attacking them from within and all this kind of crazy stuff. So when the No Man's Sky Beyond update launches, sometime this summer, so pretty much any day now, there's going to be a lot to do. And this isn't some lazy VR port either. When you choose to play No Man's Sky in VR mode, you'll have support for your move controllers, complete with new ways of interacting with the world. So for example, you reach over your shoulder to take your gun out, and you physically pull on the thrusters and the yoke in the cockpit of your ship to actually fly it. Hands-on impressions from game and media outlets have been very positive for the addition of VR also. No Man's Sky Beyond is a free update for No Man's Sky, and not only will it include the VR mode, but it'll also have a new multiplayer experience, which Sean Murray has called No Man's Sky Online but he has been very tight-lipped about what that actually means. It certainly sounds to me like multiplayer will become more robust somehow. There is a third aspect to the Beyond update too, but so far Hello Games are keeping that one a secret. So with all this in mind, I have super high hopes of No Man's Sky being one of the best PS Viewer experiences of 2019 and beyond, no pun intended. So that brings me to the next game on the Holy Trinity, Iron Man VR. So Iron Man VR, was shown off during a PlayStation State of Play video as a PSVR exclusive and it pretty much surprised absolutely everyone. Sony and Marvel clearly have a strong partnership lately, with Sony giving Marvel Studios access to Spider-Man in their MCU movies and Marvel teaming up with developers like Insomniac and now Camouflage to make PlayStation exclusive Marvel games. Now I will say that I think the reveal trailer could have been a lot better. It focused on showing CG graphic cutscenes and only brief glimpses of gameplay and the gameplay kind of raised more questions than it answered. It very much looked like it could just be an on-rails gallery shooter that was maybe only 10 minutes long, but shortly after the reveal, 
we started to see some hands-on impressions trickle out and these really allayed my fears for Iron Man VR. With Polygon and Kotaku both being impressed by the first impressions that Iron Man made on them. And from these impressions we learned that Camouflage really nailed the flight aspect of Iron Man as you use the two move controllers to aim Tony's hand thrusters just like he would in the movies and not only that but the game is aiming for more of a sandbox feel rather than an on-rails experience. A recent developer diary video from PlayStation doubled down on this with the developers at Camouflage stating how important flight was and the open-ended sandbox element too. Kotaku also praised the combat of Iron Man saying that shooting and punching immediately felt good. So to me, Iron Man VR might be what I wanted Ace Combat 7 VR mode to be a full length experience of Graves aerial dogfights. Iron Man is coming out sometime later this year so keep your eyes peeled for that one. So this brings me to the final piece of the Holy Trinity, Dreams by Media Molecule. So Dreams is currently in early access so you can buy it right now for a lower price than whatever it will be when it fully launches. Unfortunately the early access does not include PSVR support. We have to wait for the full release for that but even just the flat version of Dreams shows huge potential for what might be in Dreams VR. If you don't know what Dreams is, it's basically a user-friendly game engine. It will allow you to create pretty much whatever you want, be it a game, a movie, animations, art, sculptures, music, logic, and it lets you share all these creations with other people who are also playing Dreams, essentially providing infinite content to enjoy as long as people keep creating. Now, there are limits to Dreams, it can be pretty tricky to get a hang of the creation tools, but there are tutorials or you could simply not create anything and just play what other people are making. There have been some fairly amazing creations already in Dreams. People have made a prototype of a realistic first person shooter game. Others have recreated sections from their favourite games like Metal Gear Solid or Final Fantasy VII. Now there is one concern I have with Dreams though and that is that we don't really know what Dreams VR will be like in terms of limits. I would imagine there will be limits to creating VR in Dreams that aren't there for the flat version of Dreams. But after seeing what the Dreams community has created so far in Early Access, I can't help but get very excited for what talented creators will make for PSVR users. I'm hoping for lots of atmospheric horror games and some really trippy stuff. So Dreams is expected to leave Early Access in 2019 and VR support is expected to be there for launch. I recommend you grab it now though if you're interested in it because it's a good price at 30 euros slash dollars. So that's it for this video lads and ladies. These are the games I'm super excited for in 2019 for PSVR. So far anyway, who knows, a new game could be announced at any time. But as of July 2019, this is my top three. Again, Aspire 1 could and maybe should be included here but I just need to see more of that on PSVR. Before I end this video, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who are kindly helping this channel improve with their generosity. And of course, I need to give a big shout out to Mr. Crumb, who was on the top soaking wet pumpkin tier. So thank you very much, Mr. Crumb, for those fat stacks. I appreciate it very much. If you want to help this channel out by becoming a Patreon, then the link will be down below. You can also buy a t-shirt if you want to get something physical in return for your support. And of course, you can always just support me for free by hitting that like button, subscribing, sharing the video, all that good stuff. And I appreciate that very much too. So that's it for this video lads and ladies, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next one, bye for now.